Hey guys, today I will be taking a first look at the 2022 Senate races, and this is a little bit early. We still have, you know, a little bit less than two years until these races, but, you know, it's never too early to take a look at them, and this is just for if you're not completely familiar with the races. Um, I just want to go through which races are probably the safest for Democrats, Republicans, and which races are probably going to be a lot more competitive, because in 2022, this is you know, definitely going to be a Republican wave year. You just saw the election of Joe Biden, which means that the midterms is probably going to be, you know, overwhelming positive for the Republicans unless Joe Biden has, you know, a very very um good start to his presidency and before we get into that make sure you join my discord server if you have not the link to which is at the very top of the description below and we'll be covering their runoff races and all that a lot more on there so make sure you join that if you haven't so taking a look at this map we basically have 34 races the reason why there's 35 states that are not colored in is because we do have those two races in the state of georgia which are currently undecided um since the 2020 special election was a special election for kelly leffler her next uh race is going to be in 2022 if she wins if Raphael warnock wins then he will be up for re-election in 2022 while this normal georgia race is not going to be um up for re-election in 2022 so if David Purdue or John Ossoff win they will not have another race until 2026 but these two races are currently undecided and we will get back to them at the end of this video. So starting off with these safe democratic seats we have quite a few of them all of the west coast is going to be solid whether or not these incumbents run or not washington oregon you're not going to see republican senators from those states in a very long time the state of california this was supposed to be kamal harris's re-election first elected in 2016 so she is up for re-election in 2022 however of course she is the vice president elect and will be inaugurated as the vice president of the united states in january so her seat will have to be replaced and will be appointed by gavin newsom something that he is not too excited to do but he will have to appoint another senator representing the state of california and they will be up for re-election in 2022 however it's going to be blue there's no way a republican is going to win a senate seat in the state of california the state of hawaii also definitely solid for the democratic party we also have the state of illinois this is tammy duckworth's seat she has announced that she will be running for re-election and she is definitely going to win uh, the state of New York, Chuck Schumer, is going to run again as well. Of course, the Senate Minority Leader as of right now. If the Democrats can win Georgia, uh, both of the seats, then he would become the Senate Majority Leader. So Chuck Schumer's seat in New York, definitely safe for the Democratic Party. The state of Maryland as well, Chris Van Holen, is going to be running for re-election already announced. And then the state of Connecticut, also solid, along with the state of Vermont. So that gives the Democrats... 44 seats from their solid states you know we have all the west coast hawaii and then all these other seats is they're all typically solid democratic states on both the presidential and the senate levels for these seats that are going to be solid for the republican party we do have quite a few more of them first off we have the state of idaho definitely solid the state of utah as well the states of north and south dakota kansas we have jerry morin who is going to be running for re-election and then we also have the state of oklahoma in the state of missouri roy blunt already announced his re-election there arkansas is going to stay republican and so will the state of louisiana in the state of indiana we have todd young he has also announced his re-election campaign there and then in the state of kentucky we have rand paul who has not announced whether or not he will be running but he probably is and he's going to win and even if he doesn't a republican is going to hold on to that seat in the state of kentucky the state of alabama also solid and then in south carolina you have tim scott another pretty notable republican figure who has not announced whether or not he'll be running for re-election but it's going to stay a solid uh, Republican seat. You saw that even Lindsey Graham was able to win his re-election just a month ago. So 
This puts the Republicans up at 43 seats. Now, they do have one less solid seat than the Democrat, but taking a look at the likely Republican seats, they do have three of them. The first one being the state of Iowa. So, this is Chuck Grassley's seat. He is the president pro tempore, which means he is fourth in line, or third in line actually, for the line of succession behind the vice president and the speaker of the House. And he's basically just the longest serving um, senator from the party that holds the majority. So he's the longest serving Republican in the Senate. And he would be 95 years old if he were to win a second or not a second, but win another term in the Senate. I believe he's been in the Senate since let's see how long he won his first race in 1980. I mean, that was when Ronald Reagan won his uh, first term for the presidency. So he has been in the Senate for 40 years for 40 years as of right now. That's it's four longer than Joe Biden. So, you know, Joe Biden being in the Senate for a really long time. So, Chuck Grassley um, definitely been in the Senate for a long time. I think that he probably is not going to retire. He said that he probably, he said that he might, but then he took that back. He said that he might be running again in 2022 and that his age wasn't really going to be a factor in that. So, the state of Iowa, it's going to stay red definitely if Chuck Grassley runs again. If he doesn't, then it's still going to go through the Republican. I don't see a Democrat winning here. I mean, Joni Ernst beat Teresa Greenfield by around six points, and that race was expected to be very, very close. So Iowa is really no longer a state that I think the Democratic Party can continue to target. So Chuck Grassley, he would be 95 in 2028, which is when he would be running for re-election, which he's, he's not going to be running in 2028. Uh, to be over 100 years old um, towards the end of his term if he ran again. So I doubt that is ever going to happen. The state of Ohio um, is also going to be likely. I mean, the incumbents in Iowa and Ohio had pretty strong races in 2016. So Iowa, Chuck Grassley won 60.1%, which means he won his race by over 20% in the state of Iowa. And then taking a look at the state of Ohio, 58% for Rob Portman. So another very, very strong race for the Republicans there. And by margins, I would say that these two margins are almost definitely going to be solid, but just by chances of victory and these two candidates not having, or incumbents not having announced their re-election bids, um, I'm going to keep them in the likely column for right now. Another state is the state of Alaska. This is the final likely Republican state on this map. This is Lisa Murkowski's seat. She is a Republican, and she is one of the more moderate Republicans who tends to caucus with the Democratic Party sometimes. Uh, she's like Susan Collins has voted with her on quite a few issues. So the state of Alaska, the problem for her is that she has not been able to reach 50% in any race. Alaska, the politics there are a little bit different. I'll give her that. There are just a lot more candidates in every race. I mean, there are four major candidates that got over 10% in 2016. As you can see, she won just 44%. In 2010, she won 39% and won her race. In 2004, she won just 48%. So she has not been able to cross at 50% threshold. But the state of Alaska is still a Republican state. You just saw Dan Sullivan get reelected there just a month ago um, in 2020. As you can see, Dan Sullivan won by a pretty strong margin. So. I don't think Lisa Murkowski is going to have too much trouble winning her re-election in the state of Alaska. Now, there are actually no likely seats on this electoral map for the Democratic Party, so we're just going to move on to the lean Democratic seats, and there are again three of these seats. They are all in the southwestern region of the United States, the first one being the state of Colorado. This is a seat that is currently held by Michael Bennett. Uh, he's probably going to win his re-election. I mean, in 2016, he won by a pretty solid 5.7% in Colorado. Um, it is going to be a Republican wave year, but Joe Biden did very, very well here, and so did John Hickenlooper winning this race by almost 10%. So I think that in the state of Colorado, it's not going to be the strongest of a margin for Michael Bennett just because it is going to be a year that is going to favor the Republican Party much more, but I don't think he's going to have any trouble winning his re-election there in the state of Colorado, another 
2020 presidential contender. Uh, the state of Alaska, Mark Kelly did not have that deafening win that many expected for him in the state of Arizona. As you can see, this race really was not that strong for him against Martha McSally. He won um, by 2.4%, which is definitely pretty disappointing considering what the polls were saying, but he did unseat a Republican. You know, this is a pretty historic win for the Democratic Party. The Democrats had never held both seats in Arizona since, I mean, Harry Truman. So this is a pretty big deal for them. And this was a special election. Mark McSally appointed just in 2019, I believe. So Mark Kelly is going to be up for re-election in 2022. So that gives him 46. And um, for Mark Kelly, he... Um, he is, has already been inaugurated because it was a special election, so he was able to hit 50%, 51%, so I don't really see him losing his race in Arizona in six years, the, or not six years, in two years, sorry about that. Um, the state of Nevada, Catherine Cortez Masto has not announced that she is retiring, but I don't see why she wouldn't run. Uh, she was a top contender for the Veep stakes at one point because she would draw in that Latina vote, but of course Joe Biden went, the, went with Kamala Harris. Nevada isn't the safest of Democratic states, as you saw in the presidential level. It took a week, I mean, for their votes to be finished counting. It took a very long time in Nevada, but in 2016, this was her first election year. She, she was able to win by a little bit over 2%, so... Nevada, I mean, it is not definitely not a safe or likely Democratic state, but it is still a state that Democrats do always tend to win in, and I just don't see a Republican defeating Cortez Masto in the state of Nevada because she does have that incumbency factor. So right now, with the lean Democratic seats in, we have 47 to 46, and we still have two lean Republican seats. These being the two seats in the Southeast, North Carolina and Florida. So for this seat in North Carolina, it's currently held by Richard Burr, who is retiring. You saw that Joe Biden was able to win Georgia but lose the state of North Carolina, which isn't the best for the Democratic Party. Um, so the state of North Carolina, as you can see, in 2016, Burr was able to win by a little bit under 6%, 5, 5.7%, uh, so a pretty strong margin for him there. Let's take a look at 2010, I mean an even larger margin for him. So on the Senate level in North Carolina, we did see the, the defeat of Cal Cunningham. So I think that the Republicans do have the advantage, just considering that this was a Republican wave year, or this will be a Republican wave year. I think that if Joe Biden lost the presidential election, I think Democrats would have a much stronger chance. So that's the thing with all of this, is that if you win on the presidential level, you will probably lose your next uh race you know you'll probably lose more races in the senate in two years so it's not definitely not the best and republicans do typically have more turnout for these midterm races uh the state of florida currently held by marco rubio who of course was you know a pretty major contender for the 2016 republican nomination i believe he came in third um but yeah he was just uh he lost because of lack of experience and all of that so the state of florida i don't see Marco Rubio having too much trouble winning his re-election there. I mean, the state of Florida 2016, he was able to win by a pretty comfortable margin considering that this is the state of Florida. But again, it is Florida, so I'm not going to give it as a solid or likely margin to either party. You saw that Joe Biden did very poorly there and Marco Rubio. Um, I think that he's definitely going to win his re-election in Florida. Of course, you know, again, it being a Republican wave, that's definitely going to help him. Now, this puts the Republicans up at 48 to the Democrats at 47. So these seats, I am pretty confident in, even though we're, you know, two years away, the American electorate really does not change that much. Now, these final three seats, I think, are going to be the closest, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and yes, the seat in New Hampshire. So taking a look at, let's just go left to right, the seat in Wisconsin. Now, this seat currently is held by Ron Johnson. His intent to, re to run for re-election is currently unknown. 
but in the state of Wisconsin, this is a state that Trump won in 2016 and Biden won in 2020. So definitely, it's not really that solid of a state for either party, uh, the state of Wisconsin. And then in 2016, Ron Johnson won his re-election against um, Rush Feingold by around... Um, you know, 3.4%, which was an all right margin considering that Wisconsin is typically pretty close. In 2010, this is after Barack Obama's huge margin here, he was able to win his race by 4.9%. So Ron Johnson does pretty well for a Republican in the state of Wisconsin, I mean, just pretty well in Wisconsin in general, because Wisconsin is really one of those states that is at the very middle at this point in time. And considering that it is a Republican wave year, I think that the Republicans do have the advantage going to this race. So right now, if I were to have to give these three states the classification for the state of Wisconsin, I would say that it is currently tilt Republican. Um, but that can definitely change considering who's running and whether or not um, Ron Johnson is going to run for another term. Uh, taking a look at the state of Pennsylvania, Pat Toomey is going to retire. He is, of course, a Republican. And um, the Wikipedia data on this is wrong for 2016. He won by a pretty narrow margin in 2016. And I think that considering that he's going to retire um, in 2022, I think the Democrats do have the edge here in the state of Pennsylvania. Joe Biden was able to win this state. And I think that if the Democrats field a strong candidate, um, you know, with the Republicans losing the incumbency factor here, I think Democrats can do pretty well here in the state of Pennsylvania, this being pretty much the only flip on this map. I don't really see any other flips here. So Pennsylvania, that would be a flip and that would give the Democrats 48 seats. And finally, the state of New Hampshire, I will give to the Democratic Party, currently held by Maggie Hassan. Definitely not as strong of a candidate as Jean Shaheen was in 2020, but Jean Shaheen really had no strong Republicans running against her. That occurs again then. Hassan might have a pretty strong pathway to re-election, but she won her race by just a little bit, over 1,000 votes last time. 1,017 votes was the difference between her and her Republican challenger in 2016. So this race, it was very close four, uh, four years ago, and I think that in two years, it's not going to be that positive for Maggie Hassan. But I think that um, Chris Nunu is probably going to run for this uh, in the state of New Hampshire. He is a very positive governor of the state, and he is a Republican. You know, this is a Democratic state on the presidential level, but on the governorship and Senate levels, it's really not that strong for the Democratic Party as, you know, compared to on the presidential level. So it really depends on who's going to run. If Chris Nunu runs, I think that Hassan is going to have a lot more trouble. But it is New Hampshire. Democrats do still have a slight edge. So this puts both the Democratic and Republican parties at 49 seats each. And yes, it is going to come down to these Georgia races. You know, that's why these races just matter so much. Because in 2022, no party really has that clear of an advantage. So taking a look at the normal Georgia race, this is, the, of course, the one between David Perdue and John Ossoff, you know, of course, on January 5th. Um, David Perdue currently is expected to win this race. So if he wins his race in Georgia, that would put the Republicans up at 50 for 2024 because David Perdue will not be up for re-election until 2026. And then the special election there between Kelly Loeffler and Raphael Warnock is really going to decide it all. It's going to decide it all for 2020, but it's also going to decide it all for 2022 because the Democrats do still have the vice presidency. So Kamala Harris going to break the tie for the Democratic Party. So that final seat um, in Georgia, if the Democrats can win, they would win the Senate majority. Um, at 50-50, they would have the vice presidency, of course. So you know, they would basically be able to get whatever they really want passed to get passed. But of course, this race is currently expected to go to Kelly Loeffler over Raphael Warnock, although Warnock does have a higher chance of winning this race than uh, John, John Ossoff of uh, winning his race. But this race, it really depends. I think that if 
Kelly Loeffler were to win this race, I think that it would be a tilt race for her because the state of Georgia, it is going to be very close for a very long time. You know, on the presidential level, this state shows it has flipped blue for the first time since 1992 and the first time that a non-southerner has been able to win the state of Georgia since, I mean, Harry Truman, I believe, or a very, very long time ago, or no, not Harry Truman, um... Lyndon Johnson because the last two Democrats to win this race uh, were Jimmy Carter and Bill Clinton and they were both Southerners. I mean Jimmy Carter from Georgia and then uh, Bill Clinton from Arkansas so that's why they were able to do well here in the South but Joe Biden you know from Delaware so that's a little bit different for him so definitely a very historic win for him in Georgia and I think that in 2022 this race is going to be nowhere near safe for the Republican Party so I think that if Kelly Loeffler wins it's going to be tilt red I think that if Raphael Warnock wins it's going to be tilt blue so really this race is going to be very close but right now Kelly Loeffler is expected to win by a very small margin so it does put the republicans up at 51 to the democrats at 49 so that would be a very small improvement for them if this map were to really occur but we are a little bit early and really the only races that i'm not you know really confident on is of course these two races and then these three races right there i think that these other seats i don't see you know the races that i gave it you know the parties that i gave it to i don't see those parties losing in these races so i would like to thank you guys all so so much for watching this video make sure you like comment and subscribe join my discord server if you have not and i will see you guys in the next video